And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I love Choose Your Own Adventure books. I mean, I think they're absolutely fantastic. Stick, uh, and so when I found out that quest, the time of heroes, attack of the orcs, someone highly recommended. They said this game was was fantastic. It was like an RPG in a box. Seems like a kind of a small box to fit an RPG in, but I was certainly willing to do so. And then it, I looked, and oh, there's an adventure booklet with oh wow! I mean, it really looked neat. And so let's see and let's look at it because this does look pretty cool. Take a closer look. Once you set everything up, it really screams of high adventure. You have this map here that you put out on the board, and then you're going to take the whoever's in charge, the dungeon master, I guess, is going to take the quest master sheet. And there's one for each of the five adventures that's included with the game, uh, including one that you know is, you can write your own things on. Uh, these have different boxes you can check off, and I'm trying not to to show you too much of what it is. I don't want to spoil it. But you can check off if they do something. For example, here, if they make a promise, then you check off that box. And then it also has all the stats of all the bad guys that you might meet along the way. Now, the game comes with piles of cards. And you can see around here that there's different cards. There's not a whole lot of any one card. There's a deck of location cards. And these cards will be placed on the board, like Whispering Rock, and the Graveyard, and the Field of Bones. And those all may be part of the same quest or not. I'm just making them up. A player can decide where to go. Now what's really nice about this game is that it comes with this adventure book. It comes with a rule book uh, in which you can learn the rules of the game, but it also comes with an adventure book, which you can throw in the middle of the table like that. Uh, and, and during adventure one, as you're going through, it will stop and it will explain in a defense test, one hero rolls, blah blah blah. And it will show you how to do the different roles of the game. There's going to come a lot of points in the game. It's basically like a choose your own adventure book where you go to and it will say if here's your options and which if they have no cards in play do this if they want to do this do this 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 and this etc and it will tell you where to go and then you turn to that number and many times you will have one choice to make and people have to do that on the back is a whole bunch of symbols that show what the different cards mean and such now players are going to be playing one of four different heroes the, the lizardman shaman alanda stormhawk the elven ranger caraman the dwarven warrior and Cesar Latavis, the human mage. I pronounced all those so that when people, so you can email me and tell me how incorrectly I pronounced made up names. But anyway, here it shows you your starting cards, but really you're gonna be using this side where you will mark the red box at the bottom here to show what your stats are. And if you play through multiple missions, you can increase your strength and deafness and talent and charisma. Because usually during the course of the game, you're gonna to need to make some sort of tests and these tests will be made by rolling 10 sided dice and comparing those to your numbers. You also have vitality points on the side, which is essentially hit points. And then you can write down here any bonuses that you get. Heroes also will have uh, a hero card. Let's see, here's which shows any kind of damage that you might do. And you also have a innate gift. This is something that you can use. User regains all lost vitality points. And you just use it once per game, you flip it over, and that's that. And then you also get a gift, which is the same thing, basically. It's something that you can use once, and you draw either a gift from the combat or the magic, depending on what sort of character you have. So essentially, you move from location to location. The guy in charge will say, you're, you know, he'll read you the background material, and then you decide what to do. You have your little figurines that you can move to the locations. Occasionally, you come across a battlefield, in which case you'll wipe away the board, you will use these cards here that show the quest name to build a grid around. You will then use some of the terrain that comes with the game. The game comes with different terrain to set up terrain on the board. You put out the creatures and then you will fight one another. And that's just a very, it's a very intriguing uh, combat system in the sense that, you know, you just move them around and fight each other, nothing new. But what I did like is each character card, it will show how long any how long they you know how far they can move so like this guy can move 
one times the distance of this card. And this person here, she can fire twice. You see a little two times there. She can shoot, have a range attack that's two times the distance of this blue bar. So you use the cards, similar to some other games, that use cards for measurement. Once combat's over, you continue on, and you keep going till your people die or till you accomplish one of the five missions. Now, I heard tell that there are more missions coming on the internet, but at this point in time, there's only five missions. They say at the end, hey, make up your own missions, but that would take quite a bit of work. So that's essentially the game in a nutshell. Okay, well, I apologize, but I cannot recommend this game at all. Uh, for several reasons. Uh, the biggest one is this. Replayability is terrible. You know, there's a lot of games that I, I kind of skim on the replayability. There's like six or seven scenarios, and I say, well, because you can do those scenarios over and over again. So, you know, at least they're, you know, you can try it out again. This one, once you've gone through a scenario, it's fairly linear, and going through it again is just kind of like doing the same thing over again, maybe making a different choice, but, uh, so... You know, yes, they said there's going to be more available on the internet, and yeah, I, I suppose you can make up your own, but there's so much work to make up your own, and you don't know all the cards and stuff. I don't know. Uh, that, that's disappointing. And, and the first adventure is kind of almost nothing, so you really have four adventures, four and a half, I guess. Secondly, it's, the story is great. It really is. I really enjoy it. But... This game just, it's trying to do two things and it's failing at both of them. It's trying to be an RPG, but RPGers are going to be very disappointed because they're going to go into the tavern and the guy in charge of the game will say, do you wish to talk to the maid or do you wish to chase after the guy who just ran out the back door? And they'll say, well, what we're going to do is we're going to send two guys after the guy at the back door and I'm going to help the maid and I'm going to talk to this burly guy over there in the corner. In a role-playing game, you can do that. Here, no, you have one or the other choice. And that's going to frustrate role players to some degree. But then, you know, they could get over it. But at the same time, someone who's never played a role-playing game before is going to be like, why? Well, I don't even know what's going on here. And, they, and, they, and I've seen them be kind of overwhelmed, and they thought it was almost too complex. The combat is kind of jarring, and it's okay, and it almost seems stilted against the heroes. And these cool stat sheets that you have very rarely change, and the, the passing a test is so random. Ah. Uh, you know, I love the artwork and I love the story, but that's pretty much it. You know, everything else just really fell flat for me. I wanted to like this game a lot, and I just don't see it happening. Uh, I think RPGers are going to think it's too much like a board game. I think board gamers are going to think it's too much like an RPG, and it's not going to satisfy either crowd. So that's quest of time for heroes, but I don't have time for it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.